Welcome everyone to a new video about laptop customization. Today won't be as easy as the last couple of times, as in this case MSI decided to turn things upside down. Alright, before we begin, make sure you have your tools ready. We'll need a few more this time and I have to warn you, this MSI Delta 15 isn't for beginners, so you should know your way around a laptop already before trying to upgrade this one. Also, it's best to watch the entire process before beginning your journey into the vast unknown of MSI's Delta 15. So what we need is a Philips PH1 screwdriver, a spudger, and I highly recommend a plastic spatula like this one, as there will be some rather finicky bits you won't reach properly with your fingers alone. Not entirely necessary, but also highly recommended. <laughs> nah. Not, not entirely necessary, but also highly recommended are ESD safe tweezers like these ones. And of course you'll need the hardware you want to add to your Delta 15. Our model comes with 16 gigabytes of RAM and one terabyte of NVMe SSD space. So naturally we want to go a step further and replace the RAM with 32 gigabytes of Crucial Ballistics as well as an additional two terabyte Crucial P5 plus NVMe drive because we like to flex. <laughs> so if you wondered, yes, there is a second M2 202080 slot available. I'll leave some links down in the description with the specific parts we used for this video. Okay, so let's start our little operation. First, as per protocol, make sure to ground yourself by touching a radiator or a large metal surface in your home. Also, shut down your system properly. Yes, this is obvious for most of you, but better double check whether it is really turned off and not just in some sort of hibernation mode. After all these prerequisites are checked, we can start by losing all 11 screws on the bottom side of the MSI Delta 15. Make sure to not miss the one beneath the factory seal. This is not a warranty seal, at least not here in Germany, so you won't lose your warranty, but local rules may differ. So if in doubt, double check before proceeding. After all screws are removed, insert a spudger on either side of the notebook. It doesn't really matter where you begin. After you hear the first click, you can just slide along the edges and you should hear a series of little clicks when the small hooks inside unhinge. When you're about halfway through, you can just lift the bottom cover and pull it off. We're in. We're in. We're in. We're in. Just wanted to give you a range. Yep. But MSI tricked us as there is no upgradable hardware inside. Just a layer of black plastic and some cables connected to the motherboard. So where the f is everything? Well, here comes the tricky part. It's on the other side of the motherboard, so we have to remove it in order to get to upgrade this machine. What a fun idea. Now there are two ways to proceed. The fast and potentially dangerous and the safer and more tedious route. I chose the latter as you can easily break the thin ribbon cables and small contacts of the accompanying slots. So start to remove all the cables from the bottom of the main board as well as the Wi-Fi antenna cables. The battery connector is a bit tricky to remove since it has no pull tabs whatsoever. A bit of careful force will pull the connector right out of the slot. Now that we have removed all the cables, we can remove the three screws and finally remove the motherboard. Lift it on the left side as the headphone jack on the right side will prevent the board from being removed. Also watch out for the Wi-Fi card as it is now loose and could easily drop. Just pull it from its slot before proceeding. And when you flip the motherboard around, huzzah, a proper mainboard. So let's take a quick look. In the middle we have the RAM, we want to exchange for more RAM. At the top you'll find the two M2 slots of which one is used by the pre-installed drive. Other than that, there's nothing we can upgrade or change. Here, which is now the bottom, we can see the cooling system, but that's it really. To change the RAM, just pull back those tiny levers until the module flips up. Now you can remove the module from its slot and repeat that process for the second module. To add your new memory, place it in the slot at an angle and push it down gently. If you need force to push it down, it's not properly seated. Also, it should click right in place if you placed it properly. If not, start over until it clicks in place. Now repeat those steps for the second slot. All right, that was easy, wasn't it? Even easier is the SSD upgrade, as you can just add a second drive. MSI was also nice enough to add the necessary screw already, so no need to look for an overpriced single M2 screw online. Perfect. Unscrew the screw and place your new SSD in the slot at an angle just like we already did with the RAM. Now push it down gently. The small cutout at the end of the SSD should align properly with the screw hole. Also note that there is no alternative spacing, so you can only use 202080 SSDs or will need an adapter for shorter modules. Now put the screw back and that's it. Well, okay. We still have to put everything back together now. Flip the motherboard around and put the Wi-Fi module back in its slot. 
make sure to not pinch in any cables while putting the motherboard back in its position, especially the Wi-Fi antenna cables. Also, make sure to start by gently pushing the headphone jack back in its place first before you lower the rest of the motherboard, or you will have a hard time getting it into proper position. Once that's done, put all three screws back in to secure the motherboard and Wi-Fi card in place. Now about those cables. Here, your tweezers and the spatula come in handy to get them into position and push the cables back into their respective slots. Be careful to not damage the motherboard connectors or cables in the process. Again, the battery connector proves to be quite stubborn, so be patient here. Same goes for the Wi-Fi antenna cables. I hate those and once you're done, you will as well. They also have to be in the right order, so make sure the cable with the red ribbon is plugged into the main socket. Place it on the connector and gently push it down with your spatula, as fingers won't really do the trick here. Ask me how I know. Also, there is no audible click or any other confirmation if you plugged it in properly, so you have to rely on hopes and dreams at this point. Or give them an ever so tiny tuck to check if they are properly in place. Okay, now we can put the cover back on and snap it in place. I love this part. You will hear all those tiny clicks when the hooks snap back into position. It's very satisfying. Now put all the screws back and you're done. Great job. I hope. I hope you had as much fun as me during our little operation and that the god of Wi-Fi cables has blessed you not to get stuck trying to get them back on for an hour like someone I know. If there are any questions left, just hit the comment section down below and ask away. Also leave a like and subscribe for more tutorials. See ya and have a good one.